Well, I, when, when we launch a product, I said there's three easy steps to get there. Uh, number one is define a strategy and collect the funds based on it. Sure. Number two, execute the strategy on the Kraken trading platform. And number three, there is no step three. Mm. It's really that easy. This is Astrosh Talk, where we talk with pioneers and innovators of the financial market. So, Roger, thank you very much uh, for joining us here today. We uh, have a few things to talk about today, um, especially about the development of, of course, digital assets and products on digital assets in the market. Um, so maybe you want to start by uh, telling us a bit about your opinion on how that develops and what the main um, focuses are there right now. Sure. I think we're at the moment in the middle of full swing on a first wave ad adoption. That is, you see a lot of client demands for very basic products, a, a Bitcoin tracker, Ethereum tracker and so on. Uh, investors that haven't been able to get access to these investment opportunities directly, they've been asking the banks, the asset managers to come up with solutions for them so they can invest in them. Uh, just this morning we have seen a, a Swiss private bank release earnings and they do point out specifically that demand for cryptocurrencies products is very high and actually had an impact on, on the, the profit and loss statements. It is certainly very high. I think we feel that in the markets. Um, how do you see the product landscape in terms of products that are, that are available for, for retail, for institutional investors on the other side, but also tailor-made products? For institutional investors, it's probably a bit harder to get exposure to crypto than for private investors. Private investors very often go the most obvious route, which is buying Bitcoin and holding Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies directly. For institutional investors, that's a bit harder to do because you don't want to be the portfolio manager explaining to your board that you just lost access to a private key and hence a few million dollars are down the drain. So institutional or professional investors seem to feel safer uh, going the indirect route, even though they probably need to pay a percent or two uh, for the service. Uh, in the big scheme of things, it doesn't matter because volatility is just so much bigger than, than the fee. Some retail investors, on the other hand, also like the, the convenience of that, right? I have seen uh, people like you and me that want to manage their portfolio a bit more actively and again find it convenient being able to call up the bank and say buy or sell some more bitcoin we see also adoption by banks and in, in in that public in that in that product market with that um how do you see the landscape of the listed product right now um towards the more tailor-made products on that side but the, the benefit of a listed product is clearly the exposure that you can get as long as your product isn't listed, you probably have restrictions on how you can advertise or promote the product. That is uh, obviously a, a disadvantage when, when you want to build something up. Having it listed in this respect is, is a great asset. Uh, also, I feel that in the non-listed category, products tend to be a bit more sophisticated. Yeah. The first listed products we have seen, and, and actually still the majority, are very basic products such as a Bitcoin tracker, an Ethereum tracker. Uh, if you get adventurous, it's like 50-50 of both, but th mm. that's about the extent we see. Yes, certainly you, s you see uh, more Delta One products on that side and, 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 and let's say more si simple products on that side. Um, how do you see the markets of, of the more complex products, more the tailor-made products develop right now? I mean, you had, uh, uh, you were also involved uh, on the chain to digital side, but also on the in-core side in creating um, a, a very wonderful project, uh, executing on a very wonderful project with the CRISP platform uh, for in-core. Explain us a little bit more about that offering um, and, and where do you see the benefits in general for the market? Uh, as products get more sophisticated, 
Um, they also get more tailor-made, more custom-made, and uh, Crisp is, is a great platform to launch such products. What it is, is it allows an asset manager or a bank to define a portfolio strategy, yeah. collect funds to uh, invest this way, and then execute this in the award-winning environment of the Clark and trading platform. It's incredibly straightforward, very easy for an asset manager or a bank to manage such a portfolio, and yet they have the full flexibility of, of what comes with a sophisticated platforms such as Kraken. So basically they can, or any uh, asset manager, any financial institution can uh, tailor their own product through that solution. Is there any, anything that, uh, that would limit that offering? Is there anything that uh, people will have to be concerned about uh, when, 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 they, when they go with that platform? I don't see a reason why I should be concerned about it. The, the money stays in that, that box, so to speak, right? I mean, the yes. money uh, gets collected from investors. They, uh, it flows to the paying agent, Incor Bank which then sends the funds to Kraken. From Kraken, an asset manager could not withdraw uh, coins. They could only withdraw uh, cash to, back to the paying agent, which makes sure that an asset manager can't run away with the money. It's basically the same uh, concept that you see in traditional uh, products. Um, do you see uh, now the first use case on that platform? What are the first use cases on that platform? And um, what would you like to see more? You know, what always bothered me is that people talk about diversifying a portfolio with crypto, but then do not actually diversify the crypto in, in itself. Of course, I like Bitcoin very much, and I think you should have exposure to Bitcoin. But when you decide to diversify away from Bitcoin, then I think you should actually do so meaningfully. So if you choose to do this uh, diversification based on market cap, you end up with two-thirds Bitcoin. So it doesn't matter how many other coins you have in that index that, that you try to follow, for instance. As long as Bitcoin is like two-thirds of it, it's the same as investing in the SMI, right? The SMI is one, two, three stocks, really, and the rest just happens to be there uh, along for the ride. So what we did in the first product uh, that was issued uh, with Duloc Capital and CVVC, Crypto Value Venture Capital, is to limit the, the elephants, so to speak, Bitcoin and Ethereum yeah. or whoever grows into those shoes, to 25%. And the other cryptocurrencies then share that uh, remaining percentage based on their uh, market cap. I think that's a very good approach. It allows you to... Uh, capture the upside of some of these others emerging coins much more efficiently. Yeah. The other thing that we did, and again, uh, I'm very excited about that, is have a DeFi select. DeFi is, as far as I'm concerned, the fastest growing thing I have seen in finance ever. And that was there for the yeah. growth of Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, DeFi is growing at a tremendous speed. And... Again, a number of those DeFi coins are traded on Kraken, so they become accessible to asset managers who want to offer a product. And again, Duloc Capital, CVVC, have uh, put together an offering that allows you to invest specifically into the DeFi space. Yeah. So talking a bit more about the DeFi opportunities um, and the DeFi situation, it's one of the fastest growth uh, uh, elements that you've seen in the financial markets. So tell us a little bit more about the opportunities that you see there um, and the opportunities, of course, for investors on that side. The opportunities in DeFi are to generate the passive income. You stake coins, you lend coins, you, you basically don't have to do much actively. You definitely don't have to trade actively to generate a passive income very much in the nature of uh, fixed income products back when interest rates weren't zero. Mm -hmm. These income streams are at this point not accessible to many investors because to get into DeFi space, you do need a certain technical uh, know-how. Sure. There are 
some startups busy to make this accessible to traditional investors, both on a, on a technical user interface level, but also uh, on, with financial products such as uh, Gen2 Digital's certificate. There are a number of challenges we need to overcome still, but I'm quite confident that in due time we will see investment opportunities arise here. And hopefully people that now allocate uh, parts of the portfolio to fixed income where they have zero interest, but mm -hmm. the, uh, f the price risk of that come from uh, rising interest rates uh, allocated into DeFi space where they can actually generate revenue. You said it before, um, it's pretty um, cumbersome to see that the uh, pension funds and other allocations are, are um, lagging behind on, 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 uh, on basically on performance. Um, what do you see there? What is possible for the DeFi market and what would you like to see there? I mean, obviously, DeFi is still very high risk, right? I'm, I'm not sure. advocating that pension funds should put all their fixed income all allocation into, into DeFi, but there is a part, a small part, where pension funds really should venture more into crypto space. Cryptocurrency is one thing. The passive income that you can generate from DeFi should be another angle. And as the space matures, pension fund managers would gain experience through their small exposure. I know it may still be a lot of work, but I'm quite sure that this effort will pay off in terms of not only return, but also in terms of know-how that they gained from being invested in the space. Now talking a bit in, in depth about this product uh, with Dula Capital, what exactly does it do? What, what, is, what is the exact angle there uh, to capture uh, the DeFi opportunity? Right, uh, we, we launched two products uh, between Dula Capital and CVVC together with Gen2 Digital yes. and, and Incor Bank as uh, the paying agent. The first product is a top eight selection where the portfolio manager buys the eight biggest coins by market capitalization, not counting stable coins, uh, but just proper cryptocurrencies with a cap of 25% for uh, all of them. So if Bitcoin, for instance, uh, being two-thirds of the portfolio by market cap, it gets that cap down to 25%. I like that because this allows for a diversified portfolio. Sure. The other product that we launched is DeFi Select. So the people behind Dulac Capital and CVVC pick amongst the... DeFi traded coins on Kraken, and those that they like the most and invest in those within those that they have selected. Again, it's a market cap approach. Speaking of creating uh, new products um, on digital assets with the CRISP platform or with other possibilities that are in the market, um, what would you say are the main benefits for asset managers to work with such a solution and what are the benefits that they bring to their customers? There are three or four reasons that I can think of top of my head. The first one is, is actually cost. Um, a number of product providers take the mickey a little bit when it comes to fees, right? When, when you charge 3.5% for a passive Bitcoin tracker certificate, I don't see why this should be 3.5%. You have similar products in the traditional world where you passively track an index, and that product is 5, 10, 15 basis points, right? Absolutely, yeah. And 350 basis points for the same service, I, I, I don't fully understand that. Which brings me to the second point. Um, when you buy products from other banks or competitors, at some point your client starts to wonder why he's actually with you. Because exactly. he keeps seeing products from that other guy you risk that he actually goes to that other guy, opens a business relationship and, and eventually ends, ends up going there. Sure. Then a further reason is that you, the asset manager, or you, the private bank, you're the one who has the most interaction with the client. You are mm -hmm. closest to the client. When clients come up with ideas or uh, requests, you're the first one to hear it. 
Now you can wait until someone else hears about these things and eventually decides to create a product, or you can go and say, all right, I set this product up, give me a few weeks and I'll have it ready to go. Uh, you've been through that process in establishing um, the Chris platform uh, for, for Incor. We, on the Chan to digital side, been through that process with over 50 asset managers and banks now to create their own platform, to create their own financial products. So how easy was that process for you? Well, I, when, when we launched a product, they said there's three easy steps to get there. Uh, number one is define a strategy and collect the funds based on it. Sure. Number two, execute the strategy on the Kraken trading platform. And number three, there is no step three. Mm. It's really that easy. Who are the main targets for a, a CRISP platform now, uh, for the Incor platform? Who are you going to? Who are you speaking with? Who, who, who maybe also came up to you now uh, in the effect of, of, of the press releases? Um, what are the interesting, uh, interesting parts there? Right. The, the biggest feedback we definitely got from asset managers that have so far been watching crypto space, maybe they had a few products from other providers in the client's portfolio, uh, but they want to do uh, their own thing. Um, it's, it's, doing it on the Chris platform is actually quite economical. It's quite cheap compared to what is out there, and, and it is flexible. Uh, so a good part of the requests have actually been on the more sophisticated uh, product side rather than, than just a tracker. And the other uh, corner where we have received feedback and interest from is smaller banks. Smaller banks that so far have not had their own crypto offering. Again, mm. they would purchase products from competitors, which of course is perfectly fine until what we discussed earlier maybe it's no longer fine to keep adding those and you want to keep more of the, uh, of the value uh, in-house. In, in yeah, and it's, uh, as you said or mentioned before, uh, it's completely white labeled, so clients can actually choose the name of their products and also market it as that um, to, to qualified investors, we must say. Um, how many uh, demands, how many talks did you have in the last couple of weeks now with asset managers and banks about that? Well, I can't really release an exact number, but let's just say I've been very, very busy with more people than I thought would reach out. Okay. Definitely lots more. Wonderful. I think you have a very clear opinion about what the landscape looks like and what the opportunities are for banks today. And I also think that they are missing out in some parts. Right, there's definitely a lot of interest from the traditional finance community to look what is happening in the space. In, in, in fact, uh, uh, if you look at the Crypto Valley Journal, cvj.ch, that's really its raison d'etre to give information to that traditional finance world. And we do see more interest from the traditional finance world in to getting into the space. But you have, on one hand, you have uncertain revenues, future revenues, right? How much are you going to make offering crypto services to your clients? Sure. And on the other hand, um, if, if you uh, invest in an infrastructure, start building up storage capabilities, trading capabilities, and so on, uh, you have a relatively high cost. So what I believe is a much smarter way of getting into it is... Uh, to outsource this and at Incor Bank uh, we provide that. It's basically the whole digital offering as a service. Incor Bank takes care of storage facilities, takes care of trading, takes care of reporting and so on. If you're a bank, you basically get a turnkey solution for relatively little money that also happens to scale very well. Yeah, it's a, it's a true bank-to-bank -bank solution actually. Um, uh, how how, how does that form right now? Do you see interest on that side? Um, how, how does Incor uh, want to leverage that? Uh, what are they capable of doing with that offering? At the moment, they have all the basic elements covered. Storage, trading, uh, in and out uh, transactions, you, 
all these things can happen uh, at, at Inco Bank. And yet they investing more money into building up on these, uh, adding little edge solutions in a way yep. to cover edge cases uh, to obviously also make it more scalable. The amazing thing is how fast you can actually implement this. I have seen just a few months from first contact to complete implementation and have it ready for that other bank mm. to uh, provide these services to their customers. What is the landscape that you see? What is the market that, that, that you see for Incor Bank? Is that Swiss uh, banks, uh, financial institutions only? Is that inter going international? Um, what do you see there? Inco Bank has a very solid customer base in Switzerland, but the growth uh, is, I believe, outside of Switzerland. It's, it's, uh, financial markets are global, banking services are global, and having a Swiss provider for these banking services adds value also when you uh, a bank outside of Switzerland. Talking about the CRISP platform with Incor, um, how does an asset manager execute on that opportunity of working with that platform? Um, what, what, are the, what is step one? Well, traditionally, an asset manager would get in touch with me, send me an email, uh, and we set up uh, a meeting or, or, or a conference call where we explain how the platform works in, in a bit more detail. Sure. Uh, once the asset manager uh, understands how to proceed, we'll take him uh, by the hands together with Gen2 Digital to work on the term sheet to make, uh, to turn his idea into, into a real product. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are the advantages for the asset manager of working with that step one uh, in, in executing on that product? Two things that, that, that I think are paramount. One is speed. It's tremendously fast setting up a product with Gen2 Digital. We talk about a few weeks from beginning to ready to collect investors' money. And number two, obviously, is cost. It's actually quite cheap to set up a product like this. You own white-labeled product compared to uh, what you spend uh, on other financial products. So the whole th setup becomes viable uh, with as little as one or two million assets under management. So thank you very much. I think we had a wonderful talk and I hope to see you soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you.